Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ambarish Mitra and today we'll uh, talk about waste intelligence. Uh, one in three people globally are forced to dump or burn their waste. Open burning of waste contributes to 10% of emissions connected to climate change. Uh, there's a huge amount of dark carbon or black carbon, CO2, carbon monoxide, which comes out of this. And what this actually doesn't take into consideration that the waste that ends up in the landfill. In the landfill, based on composting and everything else put together, there is huge amount of methane emissions. And many of you may not know in this room, methane has 30 times more heat than carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So it's, it's far more worse, uh, the climate issue connected to waste. At least 2 billion people in the world, that's almost 30% of the planet, don't have their rubbish collected. And mismanagement of waste kills millions of people directly, but indirectly through waste leaking into nature and plastic pollution, the number's much higher. This picture was a United Nations award-winning photo where in this village of Palli Karanai near Chennai in India, uh, this researcher was really seeing over 10 years its entire ecosystem change where beautiful birds from the area were flying away, there was deforestation, the water was getting polluted, and he couldn't figure out what was happening because he could still see dense forest. Then he, of course, he used a drone around a larger square mile area to find, uh, this is not a blossoming flower, it's pretty much plastic uh, being dumped and taken from a much higher altitude. Uh, and this is the kind of stuff that really has a very negative impact to biodiversity, and many of you are aware of those things. So, I'm not here to challenge and be philosophical or spiritual, but consumption does have a role to play here. Uh, because we are all somehow connected to the world of businesses, which are only measured by growth. Uh, and, and the market's growing today. It's almost $13 trillion, the global consumer packaged goods industry, or FMCG industry, uh, as Europeans say. It. And it's going to be almost $19 trillion in 2031. That's a huge uh, amount of growth. And of course, uh, as much conscientious we are, right? Somehow being uh, conscientious and very aware, our choices have diversified. We want very precise things, organic from somewhere else, or you know, non-organic, but sourced this way, with this, without that. The product classification on every simple product has gone through the roof. And, and of course, post-COVID, uh, a lot more e-commerce happens. So you're getting a lot more goods in packaged stuff at home. So I want to quickly cover an observation that is happening, why this is important problem to solve. For a moment, try and look at this picture. What we're trying to say here is each one of you in this room are using around 10 to 15 platforms. You know, Google, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Uber, Deliveroo. The list is long. You know. But one of the top let's call it 20 companies based on global audience in the world, knows what you're doing, and it's measuring, and you're being traded. You know, like every minute of your life, someone is buying and selling stuff to you. That's how you see the content you see. So by the time your goods reach your home, there's such a clear digital map that someone knows what is going on. The whole world is digitized till the point of consumption. Billions and trillions go into that. What happens to goods after they leave your home in the bin? It's literally mirror world. 
you consume, what happens? Zero. There is no digitization. There is no tracking. There is no information. You know, no one is following that path till the end of its life cycle. And that's why it's an important problem to solve. But before you solve a problem, you have to first understand it and measure it. Today, there are a huge amount of large recycling plants, which when you throw stuff, at least people, those of you live in cities, in your bins, you presume you've done your job. And as conscientious citizens you have, but still, like average 92% of recyclable goods don't get recycled. That's a global average. And in some countries, the number is above 99%. There's huge inefficiencies. Also, there are new laws coming out called EPR, which stands for Environmental uh, uh, Producers Responsibility. And brands are meant to be, be responsible for the full life cycle of the product. Even they need this data. But even legislation is not able to do anything because there is no information. There is very little information to make a difference. Actually, only 1% of waste is monitored, and most of it is by hand. And so since there's no data, no transparency, no accountability. That's why me and my co-founders got into the business of waste and try and solve this problem. So on that note, I want to introduce you to the idea of waste intelligence, where to start with in major cities in the world, every piece of waste that ends up in your bin and then ends up in these facilities called material recovery facilities are tracked and analyzed. And why is that is very important. I'll cover it in a second. But before that, I want to say that our mission is to enhance recycling efficiency and minimize the environmental impact of waste. So in this video, this is what happens. In this video, you'll see a waste going through these large conveyor belts. This is the majority of the cities. And then we are able to classify it in each material type, H L uh, LDPE, PET, HDP, the list goes on. There are more than 67 classes of polymers, plastics, aluminum, cardboard. And then the plant manager is able to optimize the plant, the flow of the throughput and purity, and create a produced good, which is called recyclets, which has a buyer in the market. So if this throughput quality, think about it, we think recycling is putting in the bin, but recycling only works if you're able to separate and sort different polymers as uniquely as possible so that there's a buyer market at the end. So we found that by giving these plants the technology to understand waste and then enhance the mechanical infrastructure and introduce things like robotics and pick stuff up better, we see incredible results to an extent where last year, because of our technology, we diverted 66,000 tons of materials out of the landfill back into the community. It doesn't end there. When we analyze this flow, not only are we able to figure out what exactly the material composition is, but we also get to understand what the brands are. And that's all through AI and deep learning. Some examples here, if the images were not labeled by the AI, even you wouldn't, as a human, would have detected what that product is. So it's a very complex problem. You know, millions of these goods are coming through your cities into these facilities every day. Uh, so this is an industry which is absolutely ripe to be disrupted with artificial intelligence. Hence, waste intelligence is a very important category to watch. But also, the world of brands, they need this information. They actually do not fully understand the full life cycle of the product. Because when they test these things in their labs, obviously, they, are, they pass those tests. It's like marking their own, own homework. 
but in reality, the plants work in a very different way. They're very complex environments, and most of the stuff uh, ends up going to residue line, hence in landfill. So to build a, a lot more sustainable ecosystem, today we are beginning to work with producers and rec regulators, with packaging manufacturers, getting insights from consumers, and of course recycling plants, machinery makers. What we're trying to do is apply visual intelligence to the whole ecosystem so that we can solve this problem today. This is not a 50-year view or a 20-year view because the planet is burning right now and I don't see consumer behaviors changing overnight. So something has to be done on the other side uh, and it has to be done immediately. So still there's a lot of work to be done ahead of us, but we're fulfilling four major United Nations Sustainable Development Goals through more sustainable cities with more efficient sorting and waste infrastructure and maximum reuse and recycle of materials. We are, of course, educating the consumer on how to best recycle their products and most optimum way to do it. It's still, in spite of you having your bins, it's a little complex area because the world of material sciences is not as simple as plastic and non-plastic. And of course, life below water and life on land. There's so much pollution from these materials impacting our soil and our biodiversity in, 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 in waters we drink that this is something which has to be addressed today. So it doesn't end there. When we use the word waste, it's not uh, stuff you throw in the bin, but it's also huge amount of compost. There's electronics waste. It's, it's a very big industry. Clothing, fashion is like the top three biggest polluters in the world due to growth of fast fashion. And, and the second largest is construction and demolition. Often not acknowledged, but the whole concept, there's so much reusable material in white, in, in white goods in concrete and red goods as in bricks in construction industry that they could all be using this technology to recover maximum, uh, maximum uh, raw materials back to reuse. So in summary, uh, today Grey Parrot already analyzes uh, 75 billion waste items each year uh, from 100 plus installations in 14 countries. Uh, we are working with the world's top 70% of the market of waste management plants, so it has been acknowledged that how much value, I mean, to be honest, from a waste management perspective, of course, they're conscientious companies, but from their perspective, there's fi financial value in this. The more materials they recover, the more revenue they can generate. So yeah, we would, we would really encourage you to find out more about us, join this movement, and help us uh, building a future where every piece of waste is valued as a resource. Thank you very much. Thank you.